Praise the Lord. The soldiers in the army of the Lord, first the soldiers in that army. Why don't you stand up as we pray together? Father, we thank you because you've chosen us. We thank you because you have not only chosen us, you have empowered us. And Lord, we pray all that we need to be faithful soldiers in the army of the Lord. You grant to everyone in Jesus' name. And in the conflict and the battle you have called us to, to fight against every sin that the devil brings upon this world. Oh Lord, we pray courageously and with confidence and faith, we'll fight against every form of evil in Jesus' name. I will pray, Lord, that our victory will be guaranteed. We pray, O oh Lord, that we'll be victorious all through the way in Jesus' name. Renew our strength today. Renew our vision today. Renew our commitment today. And recommission your people again to go into the world and fight everything the devil is raising up so that we can establish the kingdom of Christ here on earth. Do it for us and through us and by us in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And the army of the Lord said, Thank you very much. We can sit down. We're looking at Romans chapter 12. I'm reading verses 1 and 2. We're talking about the renewed Christian in full conqueror's armor. We're talking about the armor. We talk about the weapon and we talk about the fact that we are conquerors. You will be a conqueror in Jesus' name. And then we put on the full conqueror's armor. We don't let, let anything behind. All that we need to clothe ourselves with, we clothe ourselves with everything. And then that renewal, that revival will then bring something out of us and then we'll be an invincible army unconquerable army of the lord in jesus name romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 i beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of god that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto god which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world but be transformed in the renewing of your mind that she may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. In that verse 2, you are going to find there is transformation. Not only that, there is renewal. And we're talking about you, the Christian, you, the believer, you, that child of God, to come before the Lord this day and be renewed in your mind it says over here there's the renewing of the mind and until then until your mind is renewed your life renewed your conviction renewed and your experience in the lord renewed until that time you will not be able to know you'll not be able to experience you'll not be able to prove the good perfect acceptable will of God as long as you are walking side by side with the world as long as you are like the world as long as you are thinking like the world as long as you are acting like the world as long as you are moving in the same way in the same path on the same road you'll never be able to prove the renewal that God brings upon the people of God you know we feed for the army of the Lord and I pray that this day the Lord himself as he's pleading with us and he says we'll present ourselves present our soul present our spirit and present our body unto the lord holy without any sin without any blemish and without any defilement and then we know the acceptable will of god pray that this day it will happen in your life in jesus name and then we'll become conquerors in fact more than conquerors romans chapter 8 in romans chapter 8 there I read verse 37. It says, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. It is say outside them. It said, right in the midst of them. 
all the challenges the world will throw at you it says in the midst of it all in all this is we are more than conquerors what did he mean when he said in the midst of all those things look at verse 35 who shall separate us from the love of christ will anything separate you from the love of christ no it says shall tribulation separate us shall distress separate us shall persecution the pressure coming from the world separate us or farming or nakedness or peril or sword as it is written for thy sake we are killed all the day long and we are counted as sheep for the slaughter that's why it says nay that is nothing will be able to separate us nay in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us and then paul the apostle he just uh, came out almost to the mountain top to shout at the top of his voice saying for i am persuaded that neither death nor life no angels, no principalities, no powers, no things present, no things to come, no height, no depth, no any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. The intention of the devil is throwing all those things by, uh, before you in trying to sideline you or derail you or distract your attention is so that it will separate you from the love of christ and from the love of god and paul the apostle said i'm fully persuaded when i put on that armor of the lord and i'm renewed in the spirit of my mind it says nothing will be able to separate me and i pray that you'll come to that experience today in jesus name the christian was renewed in full Christian armor that renewal and see what the Lord has promised in Revelation chapter 21 Revelation chapter 21 I'm reading from verse 5 and he that sat on the throne said behold I make all things new if you can just claim that for yourself yes I understand it's talking about the time we eventually get to heaven that is when he'll do it for the whole of humanity that's when he'll do it for the whole of generations of men and women from the first century to the last century but for you today you can claim that and say I want in my heart in my soul in my mind in my thinking in my imagination in my planning in my decisions in everything i do in my focus in my future and in this present life right now i want him to fulfill this in my life behold i make all things new and he said unto me right for these words are true and faithful and he said unto me it is done it will be done in your life i said to be done in your life i am alpha and omega the beginning and the end i will give unto him that is a source of the fountain of the water of life freely and he that overcometh who is that that's me i said that is me i said that is me he that overcometh shall inherit all things and i will be his god and he shall be my son look at verse 8 for the fearful on the battlefield a soldier in the army of the lord who is fearful timid and always frightened a little sin a little persecution a little hardship a little difficulty a little threatenings of the enemy will be it. but the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and the mongers and the sorcerers and the idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake with burning with fire and brimstone which is the second death my name will not be there i will not be among those people i will not be fearful i will be bold I will be courageous and then I'll face the future with the strength and the power of the Spirit of God in full conqueror's armor and then as part of the army of the Lord we march on and move on and we're going to be victorious in Jesus name we're going to look at three points in the message number one renewal for Christ's ambassadors renewal for Christ's ambassadors he calls us soldiers he also calls us ambassadors and he says we're going out 
a renewed strength. That's why we always come together. Easter period, we come together and we kind of, we retreat. That is, we come over here, we take a step backward, that we can take seven steps forward. We come a few days together, come here apart together, that you renew your strength, you revive yourself, and then you re-energize yourself, you re-empower yourself, and that empowerment then launches us out. We take a few days off during Easter period, and then we launch out again one step backward to come and renew your strength and then we launch out seven steps forward the same thing december period during days a christmas period holiday period we come back together again we started all that since 1975 and every time we'll be coming together and this time we're coming together again you will renew your strength in jesus name and then that's why we say renewal for Christ ambassadors. I, I just surprised me if anybody came here and you're not renewed. I think you are renewed already. I said you are renewed already. And then after this message, when you have this renewal and you have this revitalization, revival in your soul, and then we we'll launch out and send you out when we we'll finish tomorrow. I'm telling you, the people in that place where you came from, they will know that somebody came to town. I said they will know that somebody came to town because you will go in the strength and the power of the Lord in Jesus' name. Number two, reclothing, reclothing. You were closed before, you want to be reclosed again, reclothing with the conqueror's armor. Reclothing, you put it on again, the full armor, the whole armor of God that you will be able to stand and withstand in the evil day. Number three, recommissioning of a conquering army the recommissioning of a conquering army number one what's number one again renewal for christ ambassadors why don't you look at second corinthians chapter five and see the name you are called the name i am called and the name we all together that we're called we're called ambassadors and we came here to renew our strength and renew our spirit and renew our conviction and courage and confidence in the lord in second corinthians chapter five i'm reading verse 20 now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled unto God. You see, we are at this present moment, we are the ambassadors of Christ, even here today. And He has sent us into the world that we will exalt Him. He has sent us into the world that will reflect His glory. He has sent us to the world that will wipe out and clean off all the corruption and the evil in the world. And as ambassadors of Christ, we need to renew our strength so that as we are renewed in the Lord, there will be no fear at all what He has sent us to do in the world. In in that office in that home in that community in that little locality there with the renewal of the strength of the lord as an ambassador of the lord will be able to do it without any kind of restriction and without any kind of limitation and we will do it in jesus name in ephesians chapter 6 i'm reading from verse 20 we're called ambassadors ambassadors we're looking at ephesians chapter 6 verse 20 for which I ambassador in bonds that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. The reason we need renewal is so that we'll be able to speak boldly. You know, there are many things happening in the world that have the tendency of making cowards out of conquerors, making cowards out of Christians come over here and then you read the word of God you make up your mind you take decision you say by the grace of God when I get back home when I get back to my office when I get back to my community this is the way I am going to live and then you get over there and those people are waiting for you aha uh -huh, he has come aha uh -huh, she has come she wants to change society she wants to bring Christianity here and she wants to bring rectitude righteousness she wants to bring that here she wants to bring accountability over here and then they are ready and they are trying to the things they do will make you to say aha uh -huh, let me be careful now because pastor is not here let me be careful now the prayer warriors are not 
not here, I must be careful now because all my uh, Christian friends and Christian brothers and sisters, they are not here. If I am not careful, no, you are not going to be careful anymore like that. I said you'll not be careful like that. You will stand out as an ambassador of Christ anywhere you are. You will stand out as a speaker. You are the mouthpiece of the Lord anywhere you go. And you are going to destroy every work of the devil in your community in Jesus' name. That is why Paul the Apostle said, pray for me, pray for me. I am an ambassador in I will open my mouth without shame without fear, without timidity, to declare boldly the word of the Lord and the same commission the Lord is giving to you. That as you go back, you are not going to be part of the corruption in this land. You are not going to be part of the defilement in this land. You will stand out as an ambassador of the Lord and you will be faithful to the Lord in Jesus' name. The boldness you need, the Lord will give it to you. The courage you need, the Lord will give the renewal in your spirit in your soul you need to be able to start for righteousness anywhere you are with anybody in front of the presence of anybody the Lord will give it to you in Jesus name that's why we need renewal we're, look, we're looking at Titus chapter 3 Titus chapter 3 if we ambassadors are going to do what we need to do in the world in which we live today when many people are trying to tell us shut up they're trying to tell us keep quiet they're trying to tell don't bring that kind of holiness and righteousness here they're trying to tell us that holiness is not popular when they're trying to threaten you you want to stand out like a real ambassador of christ renewed in strength renewed in conviction and renewed in courage that that's exactly what you are going to do there what christ has sent you to do you'll do it effectively I said you'll do it effectively. Titus chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 4. Titus 3 verse 4. But after the, the kindness and love of God a Savior to what man appeared not by the works of righteousness which we have done but according to his mercy he saved us by the renewing by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. You see that he wants to renew us by the power of the Holy Ghost. He wants to renew us by the infilling of the Holy Ghost. He wants to renew us by burning off all the chaff in our lives by the fire of the Holy Ghost. And that fire will burn every chaff in your life every non-essential in your life every kind of garbage you're carrying in your life every kind of weight and load you're carrying that will hinder you from fulfilling the work he has given you to do it says it will renew us it will refine us it will burn off every useless sin every chaff in our lives by the fire of the holy ghost and when that is done there are some things that are going to be renewed in your life look at ephesians chapter 4 verses 23 and 24 Ephesians chapter 4 verses 23 and 24 and be renewed in the spirit of your mind be renewed in the spirit of your mind the mind is very important if your mind is weak your life will be weak if your mind is defiled your life will be confused if your mind is timid and coward under pressure and then he's trembling before every it's the mind that makes the man if the man is bold in the mind courageous in the mind and is able to stand is standing right and standing upright in the mind because of the way his mind is that's why he becomes bold on the outside that's why it says if you're going to fight in this battle against corruption against evil in this land if you're going to be able to do that and succeed it says there is something you need to have a renewal everybody say renewal that's how you are going to say renewal. I said say renewal. He says you'll be renewed in the spirit of your mind. I'll come back to that Ephesians chapter 4. But let me go on to Romans chapter 8. I'm coming to Ephesians chapter 4 later. Let's look at Romans chapter 8 and see what he's saying about your mind. About the mind of the natural man, the mind of the ordinary fellow, the mind of the church goer, the mind, you know, of the everyone over there. But then that's why we need the renewal in the spirit of our mind. Look at this. In Romans chapter 
page. I'm reading there from verse 4. It says that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. And then it says, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. You have to distinguish yourself. You have to kind of separate yourself, single yourself out and say, I am not part of the bunch. I'm not part of all those people of the world. I am different. I am going to remain different. You're not going to, you know, do what they do and drink what they drink and go the way they go and just flow along with them. They say, there is something in me that makes me to be different and I'm going to be different and that difference the Lord will put in your life even at this time in Jesus' name. It says, we're no more walking after the flesh. We're no more doing the things that we now we're walking after the spirit because the spirit is controlling us and making us to be who we ought to be real ambassadors of the lord jesus christ look at verse 5 over there it says for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit do you see there are two categories of people there the majority of people they walk after the flesh they cannot resist evil whatever corruption so yes that's what they do whatever defilement in the land that is what they do but it says there are some other people they separate themselves they say i'm going to come out of this kind of bunch i'm going to be an ambassador not of the corrupt society i'm going to be an ambassador not of the traditions of the world i'm going to be an ambassador of the lord jesus christ and something different is going to happen in my life and through my life and now they say i'm not going to walk out of the flesh anymore and the works of the flesh i'm going to jettison i'm going to reject i'm going to throw away i'm going to walk in the power and in the strength of the spirit and i pray that that same conviction and decision the lord will give to you this day in jesus name then it says in verse 6 it said for to be carnally minded is dead to be carnally minded that you see if your mind is carnal your mind is just ordinary your mind is superficial your mind is just fleshly your mind is just seeking at the people of the world he said it is death that's why you're coming to the lord today and saying oh lord i don't want all that i want something different and i want this new life to come into me so that i'll be totally new and renewed and the lord will do it for us in jesus then he says to be spiritually minded is life and peace then you say because the carnal mind is enmity against god for it is not subject to the law of god neither in they can be so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God but she are not in the flesh but in the spirit I am not in the flesh I said I am not in the flesh and I am in the spirit and you know the spirit always conquers the flesh think about that if you go out of this place and your spirit comes alive and your spirit is energized empowered enveloped in the Holy Ghost you go out in the strength of that power spirit and then that spirit your your mind is now renewed and then you look at life with a new perspective a new vision you look at yourself in a new perspective that I am here in this life to do something and nothing that God has sent you here to do to purge and to purify and to sanitize society the Lord will do it through us in Jesus name and you know that means you become a reformer a reformer does not you know just go along with the people and flow along with the people and talk the way they talk and see the way they see and think the way they think it says I'm a reformer you'll, you'll think about uh, Martin Luther he became a great reformer he became different you see Think about John Wesley. That was a great reformer. He was very different because they singled themselves out and they said, I have something to do in this life. I'm not going to move along with the crowd. And the Lord is calling you today, like He called Martin Luther. He's calling you today, like He called John Wesley. And He's saying, You will make a difference in this life in Jesus' name. I said, You will make a difference in Jesus' name those are the kinds of people that are renewed that are transformed and then their lives are very different they're not what they used to be it, it, it just comes to your life that you say i'm not going to be like everybody else i'm not even going to be like i used to be something different will take place and that thing that will take place will begin with renewal renewal everybody say renewal again 
I confessions, Ephesians chapter 4. When we say renewal, in what way are we renewed? Does that mean, you know, I just wash myself, that's all the flesh, and then I comb my hair and I put on a good attire or whatever? That's, that's in the flesh. We're talking about your spirit. Let me show you in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 23 and 24. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that she puts on the new man, which after God is created in, uh, tell me, and what? A true holiness, righteousness, and true holiness, not fake holiness, not counterfeit holiness, not superficial holiness, not religious church holiness, public holiness that doesn't get skin deep, that is not in the heart, it's not in the mind, it's not in the life, it's not in the principle, it's not in the character, it's not in the behavior, it's not in its disposition. True holiness, the one that is within, and that is the renewal. When that renewal takes place, it doesn't matter what anybody says against holiness. It doesn't matter how anybody acts, they may make fun of holiness or whatever they say about holiness. You just know there is a renewal, and it is a renewal in righteousness and true holiness. I pray God will do it in our lives. Give me a good day. amen. Second Corinthians chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 1. Renewal in holiness. I'm looking at chapter 7, verse 1. Having therefore these promises daily beloved, let us let us cleanse ourselves from filthiness of the flesh and all filthiness of the spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. This one is going deeper and deeper. That is, you have that holiness, you are born again to start with, outwardly, externally, all the drunkenness is gone, adultery is gone, fornication is gone, stealing is gone, fraud is gone, all that is external. But now deep in your heart, it puts, it plants that seed of holiness there, that your desire, and your dream, and your decision, and your aspiration, and your passion, and your pursuit, will be that holiness, you love it within, in the morning, holiness, afternoon, holiness holiness e evening holiness in your dream is holiness in the daytime is holiness in the office it is holiness when you are with people it is holiness and when you are with the opposite sex a man with a woman it is holiness a woman with a man that is holiness that thing becomes so deep in your heart the only thing you are thinking about and the only thing you are planning about to live a life of holiness total holiness in the Lord perfecting holiness in the fear of the Lord that's what it door for the people who are renewed and I pray that that renewal will come in your heart in my heart in our hearts together in the whole church in Jesus name and anywhere you hear anybody that is making fun of holiness or deriding holiness anywhere you hear people like you know some drunkards that sometimes drunkards they begin to sing and drunkards you know they just begin to talk about God about the kingdom of God you know sometimes you hear some drunkards they don't know what they are saying and they're making fun of the Lord's prayer you know deep within you it kind of repels you because the very treasure of the Christian life is holiness and you want to get that in your heart and in your mind everywhere you go you just say it is holiness unto the Lord my action holiness unto the, my speech holiness unto the Lord and my dressing holiness unto the Lord the job I do holiness unto the Lord the decisions I take holiness unto the Lord that is the renewal we're talking about and those are the ambassadors of Christ that you are renewed day by day and day after day and week after week you are renewed in holiness and that holiness will be growing and growing and growing until the final glorious day in jesus name in first thessalonians chapter 3 first thessalonians chapter 3 i'm reading there from verses 12 and 13 first thessalonians chapter 3 verse 12 verse 13 and the lord make you to increase and to abound in love one toward another and toward all men even as we do toward you and then he says to the end for the purpose ye may be established and ye may establish your hearts unblameable in what tell me out loud unblameable in holiness that's your passion that's your pursuit 
that's your desire and that is your perseverance you're persevering and then when you pray you pray with importunity you say oh lord this renewal of my heart of my spirit of my mind in holiness increasing in holiness every time oh lord do it for me when that passion is there when that prayer is there with importunity the lord will do it for you and then you'll be growing in it in jesus name it tells us a first Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 7 first Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 7 for god has not called us unto uncleanness but unto what tell me out loud unto holiness that's the calling he has given us and because he has given us that calling you say i want to fit into that calling i want to remain in that calling i'm looking at hebrews chapter 12 verse 10. hebrews chapter 12 we're looking at verse 10 what he wants for us what he wants for you what he wants for me the renewal of the people who are called Christ ambassadors is renewal in holiness, renewal in righteousness, renewal in sanctification and purity. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 12 and we're looking at verse, uh, verse 10. It says, For they verily for a few days trusting us after their own profit or pleasure. But he referring to our Heavenly Father for our profit that we might become, that we might be partakers of his holiness. That's the intention of the Lord. That's the desire of the Lord. That we will be partakers of his holiness. Then there's renewal. And I pray that this day that renewal will come in your life in Jesus' name. In your mind renewal in your spirit renewal in your brain renewal in your soul renewal and then in all your decisions and your life in your character behavior renewal it will be a renewal in holiness so this retreat will make you come nearer and nearer to the very holiness of christ and of god in your life it will do it for you and for us in jesus name i come to a point now but you know reclothing with the conqueror's armor you reclose yourself you put on again the conqueror's armor because how do you go to the battlefield without putting on your armor how do you go and confront all the things of the world all the corruption of the world all the defilements of the world all these traditions of the world how do you go into the world to confront them without putting on the conqueror's armor that's why you want to come here and then recluse yourself and put it on again even if you had it before you put it on again something greater something higher something heavier that you'll be able to confront and be able to stand against all the wiles of the devil reclothing with the conqueror's armor we're looking at psalm 1 psalm 132 in psalm 132 i'm reading from verse 9 and then i go to verse 16 psalm 132 we're reading from verse 9 it says let the priest be clothed with righteousness you see that those of us say we're priests of the lord preachers of the gospel pastors in the vineyard of the lord and shepherds to the flock of god and workers in the church of the living god the people that are ministering ministry to all the people as ambassadors of christ unto the people in our generation let them be clothed with righteousness and let thy saints shout for joy not sinners sinners have nothing to shout about there is nothing sinners are going to shout uh, for joy about but the saints of god those who are cleansed those who are purged those who are purified those who are really, really righteous and they are ready for heaven let them shout for joy look at verse 16 in verse 16 it says i will also close a priest for salvation and a saints shall shout for joy when the priests when they are saved when they're sanctified, when they're holy, when they're righteous. Every member of the church loves their pastor to be holy. If they hear that, you know, the pastor of their church is, you know, messing up with women, the pastor of their church is stealing church money, the pastor of their church is messing up with the maid in the house, it brings sadness and sorrow to everybody's heart. But when they hear the pastor of that local church, the pastor of that local church, the priest in that retreat, the preacher in that place is clothed with righteousness and holiness and the armor of the Lord. It makes the members of the to shout for joy when we hear that all our workers, they are holy and righteous. 
all the methods they are holy and righteous it brings joy and then we shout for joy when we hear in the places of work that there's a fraud over there but you see that man he will never touch your money he's not involved that woman she's not involved when we in the church when we hear that that all our members in their offices in their homes that they are clothed with righteousness and holiness and purity it makes us to shout for joy when our husband is telling us that well i'm not a member of your church but my wife is in your church and since my wife came to your church i'm telling you her life totally changed it makes us to shout for joy and when a woman says my husband just became a new husband a wonderful husband since my husband started coming to your church something happened to him what did you give my husband give it to me we say salvation your husband has got salvation and that same salvation can be yours in jesus name when there's righteousness in the camp we came here since about two days ago when we see that there's no fighting there's no quarreling there's no envy there's no jealousy there's no tearing apart and all the thousands of people are just calm and they love each other and there's righteousness and holiness in the camp of the people of God it makes us shout for joy and it is renewal the renewal in our mind that we close ourselves with that strength of the Lord and the power of the Lord that is what gives us joy I pray that that joy the joy of seeing our people living righteousness and holiness without any blemish any reproach any disgraceful sin in our lives I pray that that joy will never be taken away from this our church in Jesus name give me a good good amen over there Proverbs Proverbs chapter 31 Proverbs chapter 31 you recluse yourself and you put it on again that armor that gives you strength gives you courage and gives you confidence and then you are able to say by the grace of God here is the new clothing that I have I'm strong because of that we're looking at Proverbs chapter 31 and verse 25 verse 25 strength and honor are her clothing you see that strength and honor are her clothing and she shall rejoice in the time to come you will rejoice in the time to come when we put on that armor we're looking at uh, romans chapter 13 romans chapter 13 i read there about the armor that we put on about the armor that we now have and then we put on that armor every time in the morning it's there afternoon it's there you know we don't stop being christians when we go out in the morning some people they're only christians on sunday and then monday all through to saturday there are another thing but the people that have the armor of christ on they put on the armor in the day in the afternoon in the night and everywhere they go monday through to saturday and then sunday the armor is there all the time that is how we know the people who are real children of god and the ambassadors and the soul just me of the Lord and I invite you join this army that's always closed putting on the armor every time in Romans chapter 13 I'm reading from verse 12 Romans chapter 13 reading from verse 12 it says the night it says age is first page and the day is at hand let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light let us cast off the works of darkness all those in the secret don't let the pastor hear this one don't let my husband hear this one don't let my wife know this don't let my children get knowledge of this all those things those are the works of darkness and it says let us cast off all the works of darkness and then let us put on the armor of light reclose yourself in that armor we're looking at second corinthians chapter six second corinthians chapter six i read from verse six and verse seven by pureness by knowledge by long suffering by kindness by the holy ghost by love of fame no pretense no hypocrisy by the watch of truth by the power of god and by the armor of righteousness on the right hand 
and on the left it says that's the armor we need to put on we're reclothing ourselves armor, the cross armor and without that armor of righteousness something is missing it says there must be righteousness there must be holiness there must be sanctification there must be that change of heart that he takes away the stone and he gives us the heart of flesh unless that armor of righteousness is there we are not well clothed ready for the battle but then we're told in first thessalonians chapter 5 first thessalonians chapter 5 in there from verse 8 first thessalonians chapter 5 reading from verse 8 it says but let us who of the day be sober putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for an helmet and then it says and the hope of salvation you see what it tells us there in verse 9 for god has not appointed us to wrath but to obtain salvation by our lord jesus christ does it say you're putting on that armor of light of truth the power of the lord in your life and then from verse 21 prove all things hold fast that which is good we are a soldier in the army of the lord they don't, they don't just do what everybody does that person has been a soldier before you but you don't know whether it's careless or not you are going to prove all things what they do how they act how they behave what they eat what they drink who they befriend their relationships and all the interactions you prove all things you say, brother son so he's doing it i will do it no this is son so he's doing it i can do it you know others may but i cannot if you're a real soldier you're going to make you're going to be discerning you discern is this right is this wrong he said you prove all things and then you choose that which is right tells us in verse 22 abstain from all appearance of evil those are the real soldiers in the army of the lord abstain from everything that's appearance of evil and the very god of peace sanctify you how tell me how partial sanctification temporary sanctification which kind complete entire the god of peace sanctify you wholly entirely completely and i pray god your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our lord jesus christ is he able to do it yes faithful you see that call at you who also will do it they will do it in our lives Ephesians chapter 6 I'm reading from verse 10 Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 finally my brethren be strong in the Lord I will be strong I said I will be strong the days of weakness are gone the days of trembling before the enemy they are gone and the days of being frightened by the people of the world those days are gone forever in Jesus name that's why it says finally my brethren be strong in the lord and in the power of his might put on the whole armor of god that you may be able to stand against the wiles and the maneuvering manipulations of the devil we will stand in jesus name you know sometimes the devil can come from an angle you are not expecting can come from a direction you never thought of but whatever direction the devil is coming from may come through a woman a temptress may come through a man a tempter may come through a drunkard and he wants you to be a drunkard like himself may come through a fraudulent man may come through an officer in your office and he says why don't you yeah, let us have this deal together in whatever direction all people that want to corrupt your life that they come we're going to overcome in jesus name it's because you put on the whole armor of god that is the only way you'll be able to stand people day and then he says haven't done all you're going to stand ready because of the challenges that may come upon your life because it tells us in verse 12 for we wrestle not against flesh and blood 
but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. Don't pick and choose. You know, some people they come to the retreat and they look at the program Faith Clinic. I like that one. Morning message sanctification and deliverance from self and all that hmm. what a message that one i don't know whether i like that one or not and then the other one that talks about conquering all the evil spirit and having deliverance and him that one i like don't make any choice everything the lord is giving unto us everything is necessary for you to prepare for life so that you'll be able to overcome all the kinds of things that the devil wants to do you say you're not preferring one preacher to, i like that preacher i accept that preacher i reject that preacher i don't want that preacher you don't do that you say everything the lord has for me from all the servants of the lord in this retreat and in our church i'm going to accept everything it is that that makes you strong but when you look at the program i'll say this one is good and that one is not good this one is acceptable that one is not acceptable eat yourself and the purpose of god in your life it will not happen again in jesus name then he tells us he says in verse 13 wherefore take unto you the whole armor of god that you may be able to stand and with the evil day and have done all to stand stand therefore having your loins guard about with truth and having on the breastplate of tell me righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace i'm coming back to ephesians let's go to deuteronomy chapter 33 your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace i'm looking at deuteronomy chapter 33 Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 25. The shoes shall be iron and brass. The shoes shall be iron and brass. Every kind of evil power, evil spirit, serpent, scorpion, when you have that shoe on of iron and brass, nothing will hurt you in Jesus' name. All the thorns and all the stones will just march over them because you have the shoes of iron and brass on and nothing will hurt your mind, nothing will hurt your soul, nothing will hurt your spirit, nothing will hurt your Christian life, nothing will hurt your calling, nothing will hurt your ministry in Jesus' name. Nothing will hurt your wife. Nothing will hurt. Maybe you don't have wife. I have. I said nothing will hurt your wife. And nothing will hurt your husband. Nothing will hurt your husband. Nothing will hurt your children. Because we put on the shoes of Ambrose. And I'm telling you, we're ready to march out. I said we're ready to march out. When you put on that shoe for the preparation of the gospel, you are ready and you are clothed. Your head as the element, your chest as the shield, and then your hand you have the sword, and then you have the belt of truth, and then you have the shoes on of iron and brass. Tell me, who can withstand you? Who can stop you? You are going to march on to victory in Jesus' name. And then look at this, look at this in verse 27, and it says, the eternal God is thy refuge. The eternal God is a refuge, and underneath you are the everlasting arms. I'm telling you, as you come on to put on all the whole armor of God, we're victorious already in Jesus' name. I'm back to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. I'm looking at verse 16. Above all, above all, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked thank god we have overcome i say thank god we have overcome we're not don't take us for granted we're not just ordinary soldiers we have the armor on we have the power of the lord and we have that faith and with that faith all things are possible we're going to subdue every enemy we're going to subdue everything that traces up its ugly head again righteous calling that god has given us we're going to subdue everything in jesus name above all taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench and destroy 
all the fiery darts of the wicked. And then he says, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And then pray how many times? Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all sins. Thank God we have come already. And the Lord is telling us while we're praying, we're also watching. We're looking at Luke chapter 21. You're praying, you're watching, you're watching, you're praying. In Luke chapter 21, reading from verse 34. Luke chapter 21, verse 34. It says, and take it to yourselves. Lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with suffering and drunkenness and cares of this life and so that so that they come upon you unawares for as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the earth watch ye therefore and pray how often always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all the seas that shall come to pass and to stand before the son of man you will stand in jesus name point number three now recommission the recommissioning of a conquering army where that army i said where that army and the lord is recommissioning us again and he says as he recommissions us and devon in the strength of the lord in the power of the lord or the full armor of god upon us we have overcome already i said we have overcome already remember what shoes you have on remember the best place you have on remember the sword of the spirit the word of god you have and remember the promises of god and remember the belt of truth that gets everything firm around you and fully armed like that you go into the world and you go to conquer and you go to overcome and when you come back next time there will be testimony in your mouth in jesus name because you are going to find out you will become more than Conquerors. We're looking at this army. I'm looking at uh, Isaiah chapter 41. Isaiah chapter 41. See what the Lord is doing to you now and what the Lord is doing for you, right? We'll deal within your heart, making you a kind of new instrument and tune. And of the Lord, a kind of weapon that is new in the hand of the Lord. In Isaiah chapter 41, I'm reading verse 15. Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument, having cheeks. Thou shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small, and thou shalt make he shall make the hills as sharp. Did you say amen to that? In Isaiah chapter 54, now that we are part of the army of the Lord and he recommissions us to go into the world, to go and conquer, to go and have the victory, he tells us, Isaiah chapter 54 verse 17, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Amen. Nothing will hinder you from fulfilling your dream, fulfilling your life, fulfilling your calling, fulfilling your ministry. The place God has brought you to, you are going to be victorious in Jesus' name. Whoever tries to fight against that will be fighting against God. And anybody that fights against God will be defeated even before he raises up his hand in Jesus' name. And I want to assure you this afternoon that no weapon that is fashioned against you shall prosper in Jesus' name. Every tongue that shall rise against thee in church shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and the righteousness is of me, says the Lord. Jeremiah chapter 51, I'm reading from verse 20. Jeremiah chapter 51, you're now part of that, and a soldier in the army of the Lord. And this is what the Lord is saying concerning you as a soldier in his army. It says in chapter 51, in verse, in verse 20, verse 20 of chapter 50. 51 of, of Jeremiah, thou art my battle axe and weapon of war. For with thee will I beat in pieces the nations, and with thee I will destroy kingdoms. Kingdoms of darkness will fall before you. All those people that conspire together and say you will not pass while you are passing, you will walk over them in Jesus' name. 
the people that say that the work of God will not prosper in your hand God will say that they are liars let God be true and let all men be liars this work of God will prosper in your hand in Jesus name and everything the Lord has ordained for you to do you're going to do because it says you are my battle axe says the Lord and you are my weapons of war and then it says I'm going to use you to destroy all the kingdoms of darkness they will not destroy you you will destroy them in Jesus name look at Joel chapter 2 Joel chapter 2 we who are soldiers in the army of the Lord and he recommissions us and he tells us we should go out and win every battle and every conflict we're going to win he tells us the kind of army we belong to and the kind of soldiers we are in Joel chapter 2 I'm reading from verse 7 they shall run like mighty men you will run like mighty men they shall climb the wall like war. That is, there will be no weakness in your limb. All arthritis is gone. All the pain is gone. The stiffness in your joint, in your waist, all that is gone. And it says they will climb the walls like men of war. And they shall catch everyone on his way. And they shall not break their ranks. That is, you will not hit the other. You just focus on your own rank. And then you are going to succeed. Look at verse 8. It says, neither shall one thrust another they shall walk everyone in his path and when they fall upon the sword they shall not be wounded when they fall upon the sword they shall not be wounded all the swords of the people of the world coming at you will not be able to wound you anymore in jesus name Verse 21, fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice for the lord will do great things this coming year will be a different year for the lord will do great 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 things in your life in jesus name better days are coming greater days are coming and the things the lord has promised that you are part of the army of the lord to go and to conquer those days have come already in jesus name tells us in verse 25 and i will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten and the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm my great army which i sent it among you and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the lord your god that has dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed and you shall know that i am in the midst of israel and that i am the lord your god and none else my people shall never be ashamed and it shall come to pass afterward that i will pour out my spirit upon how many all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your old men shall dream and men shall see visions i'm going to see vision the vision of what we need to catch and what we need to do we'll see the visions already in jesus name and also upon my servants and upon my handmaids in those days i will pour out my spirit the lord will pour out his spirit upon you upon us in jesus name you know like an army we're marching out like an army we're moving out we're not moving out in weakness we're moving out in strength moving out in courage moving out in the power of the lord a mighty army is rising up today and you'll be part of that army in the lord in jesus name in ezekiel chapter 37 ezekiel chapter 37 i'm reading from verse 9 and verse 10 then said he unto me prophesy unto the wind prophesy son of man and say to the wind thus says the lord god come from the four winds O breath and breathe upon this lane that they may live so may live i prophesied as he commanded me and breath came into them breath is coming to you now the holy ghost is taking over your life now and then he says and they lived you are going to live i said you are going to live and they stood up upon their feet tell me the rest tell me out loud tell me you see once you go an exceeding great army where is that army 
Why don't you stand upon your feet and become part of that army? We're going to conquer. We're going to overcome. Nothing will be able to stand before us because we rise up. We're standing up as an exceedingly great army. The Lord has done it, and it's the Lord that is recommissioning us to go and to conquer. Why don't you open your mouth and tell the Lord the days of weakness they are gone. The days of Elijah, those days are here today. It's the day of power. It's the day of authority. It's the day when God is saying, I'm raising you up like an exceedingly great army. Let the Lord do it in your life. Let the Lord do it in your life. And you tell the Lord, first of all, you need a renewal. A renewal in your spirit. A renewal in your mind. A renewal in your inner man. You are telling the Lord, I don't want to be the old cranky fellow I was, and the old rigid fellow I was, and the old weak fellow I was, and the old sinful fellow I was, and the old worldly man I was, and the old worldly woman I was. A renewal. A renewal mind. Renewal of your spirit a renewal of your of your inner man a renewal the Lord is making up today in you that you'll be able to prove what is that good and acceptable and the perfect will of God let there be a renewal today so that you will not be today like you were yesterday you will not be this week like you were last week and this coming year you will not be like you have been in the past years let a renewal take place let a renewal take place you are telling the Lord the Lord renew Renew on, oh Lord, renew on, oh Lord, renew on, renew my mind, renew my spirit, renew my thinking, renew my character, renew my inner man, make me a different person. Make me a different person, a different personality. Let there be a renewal, a renewal, a renewal right now. A renewal, you will do it. A renewal, you will do it. A renewal, you will do it. A new man. A new woman, not the fearful fellow you were, the timid fellow you were, not a person that is bending down, bowing down at the person you were, but now you stand upright, scribe your shoulders, and you look at enemy face to face, and you say, I've got the power, I've got the authority, I've all my whole armor on. And I'm going to conquer. Yes, you are going to conquer. You will conquer. You will conquer. You will. You will conquer. You will conquer every fool. You will conquer every enemy. You will conquer every tempter. You will conquer every temptress. All the things that put your back to the wall in the past. All those things you are going to conquer from today. No more falling into sin and falling into, falling into disgrace and falling into reproach. But now a new life. A new life, a righteous life. Your holiness will be renewed. Your righteousness will be renewed. It's a new life. It's a new heart. And then you say, by the grace of God has provided that holiness. Christ has provided that purity of heart. Christ has provided that renewed holiness and righteousness. Deeper, deeper, deeper in holiness and righteousness. God before is greater now. What you've got before, the Lord is deepening it right now. That in your soul, in your mind, in your spirit, the spirit of holiness is there. And you hate anything, anything that has an appearance of not being holy. Anything that has an appearance of not being righteous. You want transparent holiness. You want all around holiness. Holiness in the office. Holiness at home. Holiness in the church. Holiness wherever you are. Holiness on the bus, holiness at the retreat, holiness everywhere. Let there be a renewal right now. That's what the Lord has called us for. That we are not part of the society that is corrupt and defiled and sinful and disgraceful. But you become different, totally renewed in your life. And you go back to where you came from, a changed person, transformed person. Then you become a reformer like Martin Luther, a reformer like John Wesley, a reformer that does worthies of old, that you get to a place and you change the place for the better. Where they're sinful, you make them saintly. Where they're righteous, you make them righteous. Where they're unholy, you make them holy. You preach the word of holiness with conviction and courage. Tell the Lord. I'm part of the army of the Lord right now. A soldier in the army of the Lord. 
no fear, no timidity, no trembling. You're not threatened by anybody, anything, anywhere. All the fear is gone. All the cringing gone. All the compromises gone. Tell the Lord that you be a partaker of His holiness, a partaker of His righteousness. Let a renewal take place in this retreat. Let a renewal take place in this retreat. A reclothing. Let Him close you all over again. Closed of rights. Closed in power. Closed in confidence. Closed with that uncompromising spirit. Closed. Putting on the whole armor of God once again. Wait. Put it on. And say, Lord, I'm going to have, I'm going to put on this whole armor. This whole armor. Don't leave anything behind. Don't pick and choose. And like that, and like that message. Don't say that. Take everything. The totality of the word of God. Accept everything. From salvation to separation, from separation to sanctification, from sanctification to baptism in the Holy Ghost, and from that to the service of the Lord, to self denial, to self control, to praying, and to developing your faith. Everything. Take the whole armor of God upon you. Let your feet be short, the shoes of iron and brass. So that you'll march on everything, anything that tries to wage war against the holy standard the Lord has given you. Reclose yourself again. Reclose yourself again. Put it on. The whole armor of God. I remember he has recommissioned you. He says you are my battle axe. Remember he has recommissioned you. He says it's making you a sharp threshing instrument. And he says, No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against you, you will condemn in judgment. And this work of the Lord, the ministry will prosper in your hand. And he says, Even when you fall on the sword, the sword of this world will never hurt you. Will never wound you, you will not be wounded. And then he says, Afterward, afterward, I'll pour my spirit upon all flesh. Have you been filled with the Holy Ghost? Have you been baptized in the Holy Ghost? Are you dwelling in the ocean of the Holy Ghost? Filled with power, enveloped with power, saturated with power, the power of the Holy Ghost. There is such will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and into the uttermost part of the earth. Jesus was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power, and he went about doing good. This is your own time now, this is your own time now, this is your own time now. To be saturated with that power of the Holy Ghost and to have endurement, to have endurement, the enveloping. Like a blanket coming upon your life of the power of the saturation of the Holy Ghost and the power of the Holy Ghost in your life. That's what he wants to do. And then you march out as part of the great army. Invincible. Unconquerable. Because you have the whole armor of God on. Think about what you're going to see when you get back home. The challenges you are going to see when you get back home. And then affirm and confess. In all these things that may come. I will be more than a conqueror. Through him that loved me and gave himself for me. You are entering into another realm. When nothing will defeat you anymore. And you become more than a conqueror more than a conqueror the weakness defeated in the past 
they'll no more defeat you because something new is taking place now more than a conqueror more than a conqueror more than a conqueror and you're not part of that great army and the lord is telling you like that angel told gideon valiant man valiant woman go in this thy strength and go and conquer for the lord